uh, I think it's quite clear. Our most pressing foreign policy issue is that we have a fundamentally misguided foreign policy. <laughs> there are two dimensions to that. One is that we believe that we can dominate the globe. Uh, that we can control what happens in every nook and cranny of the world. And the world is simply too big, uh, and nationalism is much too powerful a force to make it possible for us to even come close to doing that. Second dimension of our foreign policy that gets us into big trouble is that we're heavily into transformation. We believe that what we should do in the process of running the world is topple governments that are not liberal democracies, and transform them into liberal democracies. This is a hopeless cause. There's a huge <laughs> literature that makes it clear that promoting democracy around the world is extremely difficult to do, and doing it at the end of a rifle barrel is almost impossible. And remember, too, that most pressing doesn't necessarily mean most important. Uh, probably most people would assume that most pressing issues are the chaos in the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, but arguably most important would be longer term uh, problems like the rise of China. Uh, so. It's important to not conflate uh, all these dimensions of significance. So, so I think um, uh, John's initial description, you know, pointing inward as opposed to pointing outward, is really helpful and useful. I wonder if you would um, take this, you know, to, to try to bundle it in a particular word. Would would hubris be a, a helpful word? Uh, something like that, like thinking we could control things we can't control. Yes, we have hubris. It's mm -hmm. remarkably. Uh, difficult to understand why we still continue to think that we can dominate the world and pursue the same foreign policy that we've been pursuing at least since 2001 when it has led to abject failure after abject failure. So it is hubris, but it's also a form of ignorance that's so the most hard to understand. So the most pressing issue is in, in the places where people want to be very active, the most pressing issue is to hold back and do no harm. So there's two or three things on the agenda where we're a little bit spring-loaded, yes. right? And you would say, well, for, for goodness sake, stop, at least in those places, right? <laughs> so don't go deep back into Afghanistan in the hopes that you're going to save this thing. Uh, don't go deeper into Iraq and Syria in the hopes that you're going to save, save those things. Because these are the things that are that are that are pressing in the sense that that people feel like they really want to do. Something. I think yep. I think I'd argue that the most important thing really uh, is to come to some understanding of who we are and therefore why we do these things. Yeah, a, that, criti a critical understanding of the American identity. Right, and that go cuts to the core of American political culture. And I think the root of the hubris uh, is deep in the software that uh, animates how we think about ourselves and how we think about the world. It, it, is it the, the, the deep culture or is it in fact uh, the national security apparatus that we've built after World War II? The United States was not a highly interventionist country until after the Second World War. Then we built a large national security state. We had bases everywhere and we've discovered we can't let go of any of that even though the original reason for building it is gone. But we, even, even before World War II, we believed that we were the chosen people. Manifest that since destiny. World War II, we have chosen to operationalize that notion in a completely Different in way. a very different way. We yeah. think the way to spread democracy is with a rifle barrel instead of spreading democracy by creating a really good one here right. that others would want to emulate. 